Okay, let's have a word of prayer. Father in heaven, we come before you. We thank you for this morning. We can come together to worship you and to study your word together. We pray that as we go through the book of Daniel again this morning, um, we will have wisdom and understanding in um, how we can live and our faith can be strengthened in uh, in the day of in the day that we are living in this um, time of age. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh, once again, thank you. And uh, once again, this morning, uh, we will be continuing our study in Daniel, uh, drawing a spiritual lessons in understanding how the story in the book of Daniel can help us to learn what we need to do to prepare for um, Jesus' second coming and uh, for the coming uh, world that we are living in. And today we're going to continue studying in uh, Daniel chapter 3. And my title is on um, no compromise. No compromise. Now our scripture reading uh, just now we have read uh, is on uh, Daniel chapter 3 and verse 17 and 16, um, uh, 16 to 18, excuse me. It says, Sadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. If it be so, our God, whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning furnace fires furnace and he will deliver us out of thy hands o king but if not be it known unto thee o king that we will not serve thy god nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up so this text gives us a highlight of this chapter, Daniel chapter 3. Giving us this highlight in Daniel, Daniel chapter 3. So Daniel chapter 3 um, is highlighting something that I want to I want to mention here. Now, Daniel. The book of Daniel is not only about prophecy. The story that is in the book of Daniel is also, in a way, is like a prophecy. What do I mean? Um, in the uh, Bible, actually mentioned, telling us that history repeated itself. History will repeat it itself. Um, a lot of things that is in the past, you see, you know, uh, in um, in Ecclesiastes told us that there's nothing new in the in the earth. You know, thing will repeat it. The thing that you see in the past, we we'll also see uh, in the future or in our in the world that we're living. Okay, because thing will keep repeated. So the story. Um, in the book of Daniel, is though it's in a sense it's a story, but also God actually using that story to tell you also that this is something similar will be happening also in the future because history repeated itself. So meaning that the story that we are seeing today in the Bible, Daniel chapter 3 and, and other rest of the chapter as well, is going to be repeated again as well so similar things is going to take place again okay so what is the things that is taking place here in daniel chapter 3 now when we open the beginning daniel chapter 3 and verse 1 you will see that this is uh the whole 
image, okay? Whole idea, whole pictures. It say here, Nebuchadnezzar, the king, made an image of gold whose height was 60 cubits. It with six cubit, he set it up in the plain of Dura in the province of Babylon. So now two things I want to highlight here. So the whole story started, the king somehow had the idea, want to make a golden image, okay? And um, if, you, if you dig into more, you'll find out that this suggestions, this, uh, this desire was being um, suggested by his, um, his uh, uh, people that is under him. And also, of course, the king had that kind of uh, desire that his kingdom will live forever. So that's why this uh, image was made and was being described here. Um, and then for more information, and then the in time of here, this time period, even though we don't see Daniel chapter verse chapter 3, verse 1 mentioning what is the time frame here, but between Daniel chapter 2 until Daniel chapter 3, how long is the distance? How long is the distance? Um, when does it happen? Okay. Um, if you study um, in Jeremiah chapter 51, verse 59, and record in responding the thing that is happening in Daniel chapter 3, which the king, when he made this image, he called everyone that is under his rulership to come to worship this image. So it's also including the king of Judah at that time, which is Jedekiah. Uh, in record, Jeremiah tells us that the word which Jeremiah, the prophet, commanded Syrian, the son of Nerian, the son of Messenia, uh, when he went with Zedekiah, the king Judah, into Babylon, in the fourth year of his reign. So we see the pictures is clear here that in the record, Bible record, it tells us that there is a time where King Zedekiah, uh, Zedekiah had to go all the way to Babylon in his reign that um, to do something. So in line with Daniel chapter 3, we see that this is a time where they are called to go and worship the golden image, okay, to call to worship the golden image at that time. So, um, in terms of the time frame, so in terms of the time frame, we see here that now, if we put time, Daniel chapter one would be in uh, uh, 605 BC, and then Daniel chapter three is after the three year when Daniel and all of them have after the three-year test, educations, and then now they, they, um, they are able to give dreams. Um, Daniel was able to give uh, the explanation to the dream on visions and how God opened the way. And Daniel chapter 2, that was after three years. So which will be 602 BC. Now, according to Jeremiah, we find that from um, Daniel chapter 3 until Daniel chapter um, three, two to three, is in between an uh, eight-year time. Because it mentioned here Zedekiah, the king of his fourth year reign, which is four, nine, uh, 594 BC. Excuse me, 594 BC, which is after eight years. It's not like what I... Uh, you should thought uh, or Daniel chapter 2 and then the next page is maybe um, next day or few, few, few weeks, then it's Daniel chapter 3. It's not that case. It's actually after eight years already. So by this time, you know, uh, um, the king already for some time, you know, maybe didn't really think about what um, uh, Daniel chapter 2 when Daniel explained to him the dreams and the explanations, and somehow he, he began to be, um, 
used to his uh, normal life, you know, he's a wise king and then his, uh, his rule, uh, people that is under him, all those wise men that is uh, Babylonians, they um, used to like uh, um, praise the king, you know, you are so good, you are so best, you know, um, and then he, they make a suggestion, king, why don't you maybe make an image, you know, that is a uh, uh, in according to our custom, you know, that make a golden image uh, suggest to him, you know, uh, representing your kingdom will be ruling forever and ever, you know. And the king uh, didn't really remember about the image anymore and, and he tried to ignore it and, and he was happy. Wow, good, of course, good. He wanted his kingdom to continue to represent it forever in the future. So, and therefore, that is how the king make that decisions, okay? Possible decisions that he make that decisions based on that because he is happy to see his kingdom to continue to rule forever and ever. So that is what ha that is, um, it happened. And, but my, our next question is that um, we noticed that um, if you notice Daniel chapter 3, that that is only mentioning three Hebrew, which is Sadat, Misha, and Abednego. Where is Daniel? Okay. Now, of course, the Bible doesn't really say a clear, give a clear answer. And uh, according to the Bible commentary, our SDA Bible commentary, there's three possible reasons. Okay. Three possible reasons, but may not be... Uh, have to be that three reason, just a three possible reason. First, maybe Daniel is not feeling well. He's very sick, you know, so for he is not able. And uh, of course, because he's a high ranking, uh, one of the high ranking uh, servant of Babylon, of course, um, uh, the king will be respect, you know, you respect him, you know, because he's sick, don't want to push him and things like that. Now, second possible reason is, uh, is one of the highest uh, possible reason is that uh, Daniel is having a uh, outstation trip, having an important things that he need to do. So he was outstation. He's not there. Okay, he's not there. So this is a second possible reason. And number three, the third reason, third possible reason is because that um, the king actually remember. Okay, the king actually remember that Daniel actually is the one that explained the dream to him. You know, Daniel already said, you are the head of gold. You know, the rest that come is not yours. You know, now if Daniel were to be invited to come, it will be a very embarrassing um, situation. And by now, of course, king already know how Daniel is like. You know, Daniel is a faithful person, you know, he's a very strict person, you know, he wouldn't uh, lie to the king. If anything that he have to say, he would just say to the king. So with the experienced king with, the, with Daniel, he'd already know how Daniel will be, you know. Um, so if Daniel would be present there, you know, Daniel probably would be saying something that is not uh, pleasant to, to that whole environment and whole situation to worship the king. So to avoid that, okay, king maybe also don't um, didn't ask him to come, okay. So these are the three possible reasons. But of course, again, it's not saying that this had to be the reason because the Bible really didn't really give that answer for that. But that this is a three possible reason. Um, now if we continue reading, we know that the whole picture. So when the king established the whole golden image. He called everyone, you know, whether you are high ranking or whether you are low ranking, okay? Everyone, not only the kingdom of Babylon, but also every um, state that is under his rulership are also called to come. So you're seeing here that it's uh, something that he... Um, it's a one world government back then. It's one uh, one nation, uh, 
one economic, one religions. Okay, of course, back then it's uh, all they are uh, was, uh, as uh, following the Babylon culture or the Babylonian God. So they are in one. Okay, so everyone have to come together and then one type of worship. Okay, so the king said that when you hear all this music sound, uh, there are six instruments to be specific there. When you hear these six instruments sound, one type of worship, you all have to bow down and worship what? Worship that golden image. Okay, one type of worship, worshiping that specific uh, object, specific uh, image. Okay, so this same thing just now we mentioned re history repeated itself. So Daniel chapter 3, the same concept, same thing will be repeated. So um, Bible in Revelation highlight that this is going to be happening and God further explained and prophesied that this is going to happen in recorded Daniel, uh, Revelation chapter 13 and verse 12 and 15. Uh, mentioning there's two Bs, the first B and then the second Bs. And if you, in short, to give you an answer, the first B representing the papal Rome power and, uh, and second B representing the United States and how he is going to help to build an image and asking everyone, the whole world, to come and worship the image that is made for the first B, okay, uh, to worship um, the first B. So it record here in verse 12 and verse 15, Revelation chapter 13, verse 12 and verse 15, it say here, and he exercised all the power of the first B before him, which is... Um, United States will do you will utilize all his power. When the power is mentioning here, is referring to the political power and also the religious power because he mentioned all the power before the first B. And then he used all this power to do what? To to cause the whole earth, meaning the whole universe, and them that dwell in they're in to worship the first beast. So the United States will cause everyone, somehow he will use all the political power, all the religious power to first encourage and then eventually force everyone to worship the beast. Okay. And then in verse 15, and if they, some people that they refuse what they, what they will do, Verse 15 tells us that, and he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak. Okay? So, and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. So, those that refuse to follow the instructions from uh, from the government mentioning that you have to uh, worship the image, they will be punished. Okay, so what kind of punishment? Okay, um, is your is a punishment that your life will be threatened? Maybe they put you into the jail. Maybe you have to face death. This is the things that will take place. Okay, now. Let me highlight a, a bit more. What is the image of the beast? Okay. What is the image of the beast? Now, this is not like a um, physically image that you got, uh, the government will make and then you have to bow down. But rather, this is applied in a spiritual sense. So the concept is there but it's not literally um, application. So it's a spiritual application. Something that is related to worship. 
something that is related to worship. Okay. Now, um, you remember there's a uh, three angel message that is recorded in Revelation chapter 14. Okay. One of the message that are related to the idea of worship, okay, is mentioned there is that uh, they ask us to worship the creator. And then specifically mentioning why we worship the creator, because he is the one that created the whole universe. So he is a creator. And that uh, there's a day was mentioning that we should be worshipping God on that day, that is Sabbath. Okay, that is Sabbath. So, and then after that, in that first angel message, and then followed by second and third, we see that they're saying that if you don't, um, um, we ought to worship God, but there's also another power that will force you to make, to worship the beast, the image that the beast have make up. So in uh, comparing that, one is worshipping God on the Sabbath day because it reminds us that God is a creator. Then the counterfeit is the opposite of Sabbath and opposite of worshipping the beast. So in short, to give you the answer, in short, which this will require actually a one or two uh hours of Bible study in order, in order to come out the conclusions, but I'm giving you the answer straight, is referring to the Sunday worship. Okay? It's referring to the Sunday worship because if you're looking into Christianity, majority of the Christianity, they are worshipping on Sunday. Okay? Worshipping on Sunday. So this is going to come. So it's referring to, so the image of the beast is referring to there will be a a law which is going to enforce by the government to ask everyone to keep the Sunday instead of Sabbath. Okay, to keep the Sunday instead of Sabbath. Okay, we are heading toward that directions. We are heading toward that directions now. Because as we see the pandemic that we are experiencing right now, we are slowly losing our freedom, so-called. If you're looking at um, how the United States is going on right now, um, you notice the past few weeks, um, the president of the United States, uh, he had made a statement, you know. Um, everyone had to, have to um, uh, with good reason, yeah, everyone had to vaccinate it. For those that have been refusing to vaccinate it because you think that is your freedom, they will have to, they will probably do some actions to force you to take vaccine. Okay, of course, this is a good reason, you know, because taking vaccine is protecting people. But in a way, this is slowly preparing that um, taking away our freedom and using the law of the government to enforce people to obey. If you do not, you will get punished. Okay, so these are the things that is preparing the way for the Sunday law. Okay, because they are taking, they are using good reason. Okay, you have to do this. And if you don't, if you think what you do, your, your, your way is right, we're going to force you. So, those that won't obey, they will be pushed to follow. If you're not, you will be punished. You're put into jail. Your life will be threatened. All those things will be there taking place. So this is something that is going to come, brothers and sisters. Is it possible? Yes, it's possible. Do you see World War II? War three, uh, World War, first war, second world war. If you if you have listened, have been listening to the uh, story about uh, the uh, a book in a, a thousand men shall fall about the pastor, uh, pastor um, Francis Hesser, um, how he actually faced experience that um, um, there's a force that he had to um, he can he is not able to keep the Sabbath and things like that. 
but somehow God opened the way. Okay, so thing will happen. You will be forced. When you are being forced, will you stand for what is right? Will you still continue to be faithful to God? Now, we already come to Daniel chapter 3. Daniel chapter 3 is in the positions where Daniel chapter 1, Daniel chapter 2 already passed. When we remember Daniel chapter 1, Daniel chapter 2, you remember um, Daniel chapter 1 is about uh, is the beginning where Daniel learned to be faithful to God. And then, of, and then after that, he continued to be faithful, continued to connect with God, continued to build that strong relationship, continued to be faithful in the little things. And then after three years, he's ready. God said, you are ready. I'm going to use you to be my witnesses. And he gave him the ability to give uh, explanation of the dream. And then he explained to the king to witness for the king and also to the people that is there so that all of them had the chances to choose to believe, to choose to trust, to choose to serve God. And then now we come to Daniel chapter 3. Okay, The experience that they have gone through have prepared them to stand when the crisis come, which is Daniel chapter 3 come in. Now, uh, our next point that I want to highlight here, that Exodus chapter 20, verse 3 to 5, this is the reason why the Jewish, they stand for, the three Hebrew boys stand for, they will not worship the image because that is their principle. That is the command that God has given to them. Verse uh, 3 to 5 to us that thou shalt not have other God before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image. Okay or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Verse 5, Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them, for I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the father upon the children and then unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. So here, tell, this is a principle that for all the Jewish people, telling them that you only can serve God. You cannot make images and bow down and worship them because this is a wrong thing, because this is a false thing, this is a lie. This is a lie. So this is what they do. So um, uh, the three Hebrew that is there, which is the friends of um, Daniel, the three companions, they are there and they refuse to worship. They refuse to worship. So now the first things that I want to highlight here, how they come to this point. How can they stand at that moment and able to refuse to worship when, when you know that if you, do, if you do that, your life will be threatened. Brother and sister, we always come, and how can that happen to us? You know, I want to tell you this is not one day things. This is the decisions that they have started long ago from Daniel chapter 1, 11 years ago. They have made the decisions. And then continue to practice that every day for 11 years to be faithful to God. Their faith has been building up. And therefore, they are able to face this crisis. You know, um, same thing. If you remember Abraham, before he called the father of faith, okay, before he called the father of faith, yeah, he made a lot of mistakes before showing that he did not really trust God. 
he lied to those uh, pagan king that his his uh, his wife, um, not saying lie, he's actually telling half truth. Okay, that he just tell that this is my uh, sister. Okay, but he did not say that this is my wife. And then also um, he showed a lack of faith that um, he he mar he he take uh, his wife servant to be his second wife. Thought that um, this is a way that he will have a have a son. Also, it's another mistake showing that he did not trust God. Until, until he had the son from the, uh, his wife, Sarah, and then until the son grew up. By the first time, many mistakes until this time, God asked him to sacrifice your son. His son already about teenage age, about 18 years old that time. So from the first time he was called by God, God told him that I'm going to make you a great nation. Until this time, he reached his uh, work. He was able to have success over the test and he was being called the father of faith. Take him 20 plus years for him to reach that point. Brother and sister, to be able to stand when the crisis come is not a one day thing. It's a process. It start at the first step and then reach the climax. Okay, reach a climax. So first step wrong, all following step will wrong. All the following step will be wrong. I'm going to share with you a story from uh, Pastor, uh, Pastor Goya when he shared his testimony about Sabbath, but not about him. Of course, we know that he had been faithful. You know, the first day when he entered into the army, he already told, I'm not going to break Sabbath. I will going to keep Sabbath. And remember the first time I, I shared his, um, how he keep the first Sabbath. He keep his whole Sabbath on the, in the toilet for the whole day of the whole that particular Sabbath. And then, of course, the rest, he continued to be faithful. And then God opened a way and then he was able to, kept Sabbath. He was able to go to church to worship God. Miracle take place how God opened. But also, of course, he also shared that um, his friend also is an Adventist, but he chose another decision. He did not make the first stand. He did not make the first stand. He said, he think, you know, why go against it? Maybe I just compromise the first and then uh, when the time I'm able to keep the Sabbath come. I will keep it. So that is his friend did. The first time he, he compromised, he, he, he break the Sabbath, he go and work, you know, and so on. And then after that, he continued the same thing. Every Sabbath, there is always things to do. Uh, up, uh, he have never a chance to keep the Sabbath. And even there's a point, um, those people, um, the Romanian, because... Uh, that, that time, these people, they are actually, they don't believe in God. So they mock at him, this friend, you know, um, to mock at him how he asked this man, this person, you know, to, to uh, do the work. That is actually a not necessary work, okay? What type of work is not so necessary? It, they make them to work just to mock him. How? He asked them to move this guest from this uh, camp to another camp, this Sabbath, and then from that another Sabbath, move this gas tank from this tank, go to back to the tank, and every Sabbath doing the same thing back and forth, back and forth, until he finished his army the rest of the time. And this friend, um, he come. There's one time he come to uh, Pastor Goya and ask him, you know. What should I do? What should I do? I can keep the Sabbath. You know, they, they're doing this to just mock me. So, Pastor Goya say, just tell them you need to keep Sabbath. And then this friend say, no, if I tell them, they're going to put me into jail. They're going to persecute me. Then Pastor Goya say, 
then just go into jail. Just be ready to go in. And the friend said, no, I cannot. If I do, then I, I have to, I don't want to, I don't want that. Then Pastor Goya said, then just continue to do what they say. But brother and sister, a lot of time, this is what happened. You know, we, we need to make a stand. You know, if we don't make a stand at the first place, the, 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 the time you think will come for you to be able, when the time will be easy for you to keep Sabbath or, or to be faithful to God in other things besides Sabbath, that day will never come if we wait for that day. That is one, this is this story is one of the examples telling us. And there's a lot of other story is showing us this example as well. The first step wrong, the rest of the step is wrong also. So the first step right, the rest of the step will be right as well. Now, some of you may say, I already wrong in the first step. So how? Then start correcting on your second step or first step or force that it's always never late and never do never do be too late you know just correct it when the moment you correct it the rest of the step you will be on the right path and the the part that the, the not enough part god is going to cover you so we need to make our first step right we need to change our step to the right step when we do that god is going to empower us and that is a time where you will begin to see miracle after miracle, how God opened way to do something that is seem to be impossible to do it in this world that we are living in. Okay. So, so it's important for us to remember that. Now you remember. Um, now I want to switch your mind to go to that um, uh, Jesus example. Do you know that? Jesus, when he faced temptations, there's three areas of temptations he faced. And that is exactly the three things Satan is going to tempt us on. Okay? First, Jesus was being tested on food. You know, turn this stone into bread because you are very hungry already. Uh, by, so, turn it. And Jesus refuse he said he mentioned that um men shall not live by bread alone but by every word proceeded out of the mouth and same thing you see a um uh, and after that is a test on worship you know if you worship me i'm going to give you all the riches everything on this earth give it to you of course Jesus mentions, you know, to refuse to that. And he say that we only worship God and God alone. And then when we come to this, uh, uh, the, third worship, the third test, is the test on God promises. He said, you, 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 you jump down from this hill, you know. Uh, God is going to protect you. This is God's promises. But of course, we, we, we know that if we study clearly in the, to the word of God, we know that Satan had twisted the word of God. You know, it's based on uh, we need to follow God with not our selfish desire. And therefore, um, God, Jesus again refused to do that. He, re, um, he, he said that we should not tempt God. Now, seeing this picture, you will find interesting comparing with Daniel, what we have studied so far, Daniel chapter 1, Daniel chapter 2, and Daniel chapter 3. The test on food happened where? It takes place in Daniel chapter 1. It takes place in Daniel chapter 1. Um, Daniel and the three friends, they stood for um, eating simple, eating healthy, living healthy. They don't want to go against God's uh, principle in terms of, of food. Faithful in the little things. So you see here a parallel on uh, Jesus' temptation as well. The first test on food. Because this is, is something that God is going to test us. And in the world, many people, including myself also sometimes, we, we, we may fail into the temptations of uh, food. You know, we may, um, 
we just sometimes not able to um, control ourselves. But thank God, we're not doing this by our own. We're doing it by, by to, 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 to stand for the uh, uh, food side on, on eating healthily, not by ourselves, our strength, but by God's strength, we are able to do it. Daniel is the same thing. He is able to do it not because he's, he's his own strength, but he trusts in God that uh, if, he, if he move up in the first step in faith, God is going to bless his faith and multiplies his faith. He has more faith. He has more strength to overcome that temptations. Now, same thing. We come here, Daniel chapter 1, about food. Now, when we reach Daniel chapter 3, we see that it's an issue about worship. Again, about worship. Worshipping, I mean, worshipping is nothing wrong. But the problem is, who do you worship? Daniel chapter 3, they ask them to worship the golden image. So same thing will come to us again in the future. As I mentioned, history will repeat itself. We will face that same question again. Will we be faithful to God, worship God only, or worship uh, what um, the other religions or the, 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 uh, the nations have asked us to do? Uh, worship other God, or they may say, oh, you're worshiping God, but just change the day. Okay, just minor change will do. But the problem is even minor change is also making your stand, um, is making that it's not a stand. So, um, so no compromise house is a daily faithfulness. It's something that you have to do every day to build up. It's not, it's not happened instantly. We thought that is a miracle. No, it's something that we have to build on. So that when we do that, we will be able to stand in the crisis. So brother and sisters, if you don't, don't let that kind of thought, you know, when that crisis come, oh, I'm going to be ready. I'm going to stand. I tell you, you will not be ready to stand if you don't do it now. You remember Peter? Uh, uh, disciple Peter, Jesus, uh, Jesus' disciple. One of the things that he mentioned to he mentioned to Jesus, I will never forsake you. I will never deny you. I will fight for you. But when crisis come, what did he do? He denied Jesus three times. He did not stand for Jesus. None of the disciples, of course, beside Peter, none of the disciples also, they all run away because they are not ready. Brother and sister, don't think that you are able to be ready when that day come. The decision have to make now if you haven't made it. But if you already have made that, continue to be faithful. Continue to do that every day until the crisis come. And then, of course, uh, we know what happens, you know. Uh, the Okay, in short, the story they, that they refuse to the king and tell them that, you know, we will not worship, you know, if we, um, God is going to deliver us. And one of the astonishing reply that they make is that they already prepared to the worst. If God does not deliver us from these situations, meaning that they are ready to face that. They will not worship the golden image. They will, even they have to die, cost their life, they will still continue to be faithful to God. That is real Christians, brothers and sisters. When we, as a Christian, when crisis come, will we still stand? That will tell you whether you are a real Christian or not. 
A lot of time we think we go to church, uh, we are true Christians. A lot of time we think that we read the Bible, we are real Christians. A lot of time that we thought, we, we pray, we are real Christians. And don't get me wrong, all these things is the things that we should do. And it's one of the signs that tell us that uh, we are Christians. But the problem is that this will not tell you um, that whether you are strong or not. Whether you are strong or not is only when the test comes, then you will know. Yeah? So that is what they do. They are ready to die. Even if God does not deliver them, they will, just, they will not give up them. And so the king get very angry. You know, he asked the, his servant to heat up the fiery furnace seven times. Now, there's no way you can I heat up seven times. Basically, the seven times basically means that put it the, the fiery into the hottest you can get. Okay? Make the fire furnace so hot. Okay? Now, we know the fire is so hot up to the point where the, the, the strong men, the Bible mentions the mighty men that carry this three uh, Hebrew put into the fiery furnace when the moment they throw them in, they are also being burned by the fire, die already. You can see the fire is so hot. Okay? But when the moment they are being thrown into the fiery furnace, the king noticed something different. What is that? The king, it mentioned here, Daniel chapter 3, verse 24, 25. They see, the king sees something different. What is the difference? He sees a fourth person. Some, why is fourth person? I thought I thought I command only three person that is inside. And he see the fourth person in mentioned in verse 25. He answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose, walking in the midst of the fire, and they have no hurt. They you didn't hear screaming, you oh, ah being that kind of pain, that kind of screaming, you know. All those things you don't, you can, um, they are not being hurt by the fire, you know, they just walk in the midst of the fire. And he said, and this man, the fourth person, had the form of the likeness of the Son of Man. You see here that God is trying to witness to this king. God is trying to save this king. He wants to tell him, tell this king, I am the true God. Will you recognize me? Will you learn to choose me? Of course, if you study continually, which is the next week, we will be studying in Daniel chapter 4. He did not learn the lesson. And then God had to come out another way to turn him around. And finally, he shared his testimony on Daniel chapter 4. Of course, we will talk about that next, next week. But now, God is trying to witness to him. And he sees that miracle take place to tell him, you know, I am a real God. And Isaiah chapter 43 in verse 1 to 3, this is a promises. Okay. This is a promises that is said here, verse 1. But now thus saith the law the, that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel. Fear not, for I have redeemed thee, I have called thee by thy name. Thou art mine. Brother and sister, we are belong to God. When the moment we choose to trust him, serve him, to be faithful to him, this is a promise that God has given to us. Fear not. You are the one that I have redeemed. I, I will redeem. And verse 2, it say, what are the promises that are here? When thou passest through the water, I will be with thee. And through the river, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shall not be burned, neither shall the flame kinder upon thee. This is a promise. For those that have been faithful to Him, God is going to be with us. 
God is going to deliver us. Yeah, this is a promise, brother and sister, so that we can have the confidence to, to be faithful to God. Revelation chapter 2, verse 10. Revelation chapter 2, verse 10. You say here, fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Now, God already told us earlier. He did not say that there's no suffering in the future. He already told us suffering is going to be there. But you do not need to fear. God is, this is a promise that God has given to us. Why? Because, behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that ye may be tried, and ye shall be, thou shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. Brother and sister, God did not say that he's going to remove suffering, death, trouble away. If, if someone have told you, Bible say that, you know, God is going to deliver us. Yes, sometimes yes, but not all the time. There will be a time God will allow us to go through that suffering. Of course, because that God knows us, we are ready for that. Huh? Okay, we are ready for that. He can use us for our greater witnessing for people, bringing more people to him. That's why God allowed that to happen. But when God, if God allowed that to happen to us, be confident that you are able with God's help, we are able to face it. You know, and at the end, God is going to give us the crown of life. A life that eternal life, we will continue to live happily in heaven. Um, no more Satan is going to destroy that. Uh, we we'll take that away from us. Now, I want to end the sermon from this, uh, this um, story and this experience. Um, you re if, you, if you have the chance or study about the Reformation time, how uh, Christianity uh, have come out from Roman Catholic Church. All those reformers, they have risked their life to do that so that we can have the Bible in our hand to study. We can know what is true. They have risked their life. And one of the reformers, I don't remember the name, but this is what he experienced that he had go through. He had been faithful. He, he, he preached the word of God, uh, bringing many people to, to, to believe that Bible and Bible alone is their, is their foundations of their life. And many people trust it. And he's a teacher. There are many students. And one of the time he have come to a point where he have to face death penalty. He have to be burned by the fire on the fire. I uh, mean, that, that kind of punishment. And one time the student told him, you know, teachers, how can we know God is with us? This is this kind of terrible things being burned, all this punishment is not an easy thing. How can we have confidence that God is with us? The teacher also not really sure also, but somehow he answered with wisdom. I believe the Holy Spirit may have put that word into his mouth. He said, if you have heard that I'm going to sing and still praising God when I was being burned by the fire, you know that God is with me. So, happened, he was being taken, he had put into the, being born in the wooden, and then they put a lot of wood, get ready, you can go to burn. When the fire uh, was kinder, and the fire go up, become bigger and bigger up to the point you can't see the person that is going to burn by the fire anymore. The students was down there 
watching and waiting and seeing what is going to happen. And suddenly, they hear the singing voice. Uh, this song may not be, be the song that he sings, but he say, Great is thy faithfulness, O God, my fathers. There is no shadows of turning with thee. Thou changest not thy compassions. They fail not as thou hast been, thou forever will be. When the moment the singing voice is going up, the, the, the sound is going louder and stronger, the student hear it and they watch it watch at each other. Let's go. Our teachers, God is with him. We have the assurance that God is there with him. Let us continue. Continue to preach the word. Continue to share the word so that many more people will have the truth that they will be, have, they will also have the assurance that for salvations. Brothers and sisters, my conclusions for today, to remember crisis is going to come, which I have been saying this many, many set up already, but I have to keep reminding you again, just like Deuteronomy, the Sabbath school lessons that we are studying today. Deuteronomy means repetitions. Why do we need repetitions? Because God do not want us to forget. God do not want us to fail. Therefore, he wants us to remind us again. Crisis is coming. Are you ready? And how can we be ready? We need to start the first step. And then continue to go on. Continue to go on to be faithful every day. Whatever things that you know is true need to do, whether keeping the Sabbath, whether living healthy, uh, to be faithful to God, uh, to be faithful in the things that we do, all those things, faithful all those, in all those things every day. When we do that, when our faith grow, we will reach the point, God will say, good, you are ready. I can use you. So, how to reach the point where we can also, like the three Hebrew boy, like Daniel, right, the rest of the Bible character to say, no, I'm going to be faithful to God no matter how. I will not compromise at all. How can we reach a point? It's a daily faithfulness that built up from there. It would take time, brothers and sisters. So my conclusion is building up on daily faithfulness. That is a key to stand in the crisis. Are you ready? There's time is not too much left. It's soon to come into and close. Are you ready? Are you ready? If you want to ask God to help, you know that you, have, you, you are not ready, you have failed many times. If your desire is, Lord, I want to be faithful. I want to change. But my body is weak. I'm not able to. Lord, can you help me? God will say, yes, I will help you. But will you be willing to give your, yourself completely to him. If you desire to give your life, continue 
or completely to Him. In wherever you are, you can raise up your hand to God, indicating that, God, yes, I want to give myself to you. I know I'm weak. A lot of time I fail you. But God, please help me. And those that have been starting, you have been starting on, you have doing what is right, you know that you have been faithful, and you see that God has been helping you and you are blessed. You say, Lord, but I don't trust myself. I know I'm weak also. I may fail sometime. Lord, continue to help me so that I will continue to carry on the, the rest of the step. I will be on right track as well. And every day I will continue to stick to daily, daily um, faithfulness to you, connection with you. Lord, please help me. If, you, if that is your desire, you also can raise hand. You may raise hand to indicate to God as well. Let's have a word of prayer. Father in heaven, you see the hands. You see our hearts wherever we are. Father, I don't see everyone in the screen. But you know what is in their heart. You know their conditions. You know what is their situations. You know our struggle. We know time is not too far away from us of the crisis that is coming. We need to be ready. Lord, please help us. We commit our life once again into a hand. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, brothers and sisters. Amen.